Well, ladies and gentlemen, third time was a charm. We've hit a bit of a purple patch in our consistency on these performances. Our third consecutive top 20 or better in a row, which has done wonders towards our leaderboard position, which I'll show you in a few moments' time. But in terms of the group stage of Rio, it was another scrappy, confusing, surprising, and everything in between. All the reasons we love Counter-Strike were seen in this group stage. A lot of shocks, twists, and turns. And the biggest story probably is G2 crashing and burning, not winning a single match, going down originally to the hands of Heroic 1310, and then being knocked out 2-0 in pretty straightforward fashion by Eternal Fire, who've been on a good patch themselves as of late, but the loss to Heroic was especially surprising to me. And not just to belittle G2 and say like, oh, the, the hype train's are already dead and they've crashed and burned and everything else. Like Heroic were really good. Very surprising. Uh, probably another one of the mo more surprising teams out there that if we're being honest, have kind of been on life support. They've kind of been like the walking dead as a team. Dexter with tons of visa issues. Uh, Nurt's not performing to the levels that we know he's capable of. He's such a good player individually. One of the best rifles on the planet when he's feeling it. Um, Tess is not really delivering. And yet here we are. They went through clean sweep. They didn't drop a single map. They beat G2, Astralis, and Vitality. So G2 and Vitality on their way through to the playoffs is legit as it gets. Yes, Astralis look pretty poor. They're still finding their way with KD and donning the leadership role. But take nothing away from Heroic. Very impressive stuff indeed. Um, but G2 were very disappointing. And I think one of the reasons I got top 20% is because I didn't double stack them. I think a lot of people double stack G2 and... Or they went for like a Nico or a Munisi, one of their higher sort of tier players that just didn't get many points or even negative points. I think I even called my last video like Mobs MD is going to put on a clinic at, at IM Rio. So I was believing and nah, it was maybe a clinic for poor play and like, you know, disappointing. But minus 12 is is horrible. Um, my only, only minus player though, everyone else got me positive points. I think ultimately what also saved me is that I lent a little bit more into Mouse and I played my budget just a bit better. I was expecting to make it through to the playoffs and they had a pretty good run as well to be fair like they did get knocked down fairly early on from furia who by the way on a side point had the most legit run of any team to make it through to the playoffs they beat phase in their first game mouse in their upper semi-finals and then navi they beat them 2-0 in the upper finals that's about as legit as you could really ask for. So everything I said for Heroic is pretty much the same for Furia. You know, they're, they're a team that's... There's so much been expected of Kei Serato and Yuri in particular. And when they sign those lengthy constra uh, contract extensions, a lot of people rolling their eyes and like, oh God, they're in sort of this purgatory, this this hell. They're never going to reach their limits of what they could be potential um, ability levels and winning majors and tier one events and all these kinds of things. But... Listen, if this is the beginning, if this if this is where things start to get interesting, then I'm all for it. I would not be against the idea of Fury winning the entire tournament. It is on Brazilian soil, but then you have to play devil's advocate and say, well, is that the reason why they're playing this well? Is that why we haven't seen them do much in sort of international events in EU and NA and elsewhere? Possibly. They still have to get the job done, though, and their side of the bracket, as I'm about to show you, is the harder side, in my opinion. I think Na'Vi actually have the easier side overall, but then I also have to talk about my boy Spinks, who played really solidly. Vitality did end up getting 2-0, as I mentioned before, by Heroic, which was quite a big shock and surprise for me personally, but he was still dipping in, and he was still getting the points. Um, he is just a very dependable player, and although he had a little bit of a dip in form for a while, where Flamesy actually overtook him, and he was no longer sort of like the second star of vitality behind Zai Wu. I think he's reclaimed that place and in some cases is outperforming Zai Wu on certain maps when Zai Wu's a bit quiet. Sphinx is the guy that really steps up and delivers. So I was very impressed with how he played overall. It has put me though, as I mentioned before, having three consecutive good results and having that consistency has catapulted me into third position outright. But it should be highlighted if you see there, there's only six points between me and ninth position. And that can quickly turn against me if I don't keep that consistency going. If I have a stinker here, I'm quickly out of the top five probably. And there's a big gap between me in second and me in first. So we've got to keep it going in the right direction. Now, if we have a look at the playoffs, 
as I just highlighted before, in my opinion, I think Na'Vi have the easiest run on paper, for whatever that means. How many times have we said on paper they sh the X team should win this game, Y team should lose this game? Doesn't happen that way. It very rarely does. All we can do is our best for educated guesses. And for my money right now, if you're looking at consistency, I think Na'Vi are the best team on the planet. Yes, G2, they, they've just been off the back of a very big win, but then they've just completely faltered and failed to get started in this tournament. And that kind of, for me, epitomizes G2. When they're on form... When they're firing on all cylinders, I think they probably have the most talent across the board of any team. When you consider they have Munisi and Nico and Molbs, that trio is outrageously good. And then Hunter is no scrub either. So I think when you look at like the absolute pinnacle of ceilings of possibility, sure, G2 are probably up there. And they definitely have more stars than Na'Vi have. But Na'Vi have Alexi, and they're this slow and steady, methodical team that just seems to churn out result after result after result. They always seem to make playoffs. They always seem to go far in tournaments. They remind me a little bit of how FaZe were up until maybe four or five months ago, where they were just in every single playoff, semifinals, grand finals. That's turned around, but Na'Vi is still here. VP haven't really done enough to make me that excited. Their run through to this point was a win against 9Z in the lower round, who got smashed by Vitality 13-3, by the way. VP got knocked down to the lower bracket by the Mongols. They then beat Astralis, who got wrecked by Heroic 2-0, and then they ended up beating the Mongols 2-0. So they kind of had this revenge grudge match against the Mongols. So it's not an easy run, but it's nowhere near as kind of crazy to me or as impressive as Furia's run or Heroic's run or Mouse for that matter who did a lot of work to get their way across or Vitality so I'm thinking Na'Vi versus VP for me at least feels like a pretty straightforward one for Na'Vi I think Na'Vi get the W and I think they do it emphatically I think it's a 2-0 probably um, then against Heroic who looked really good some of those Wins, though, were off the back, especially their victory against Vitality. I'm going to double-check this because I want to make sure I don't get this wrong. Yeah, I am. I, my, my initial thought was right. It was off the back of Tessis dropping a 1.52 rating against Vitality and Zaiwu having an off game and Flamesy also having an off game. So it's not to belittle their win against Vitality. It was still legit. They absolutely deserved to win it. But how often is Tessis going to be able to put churn out 1.52 ratings? How often are we going to see this team actually perform to that level? I, I haven't seen enough consistency over Heroic over a, a bunch of weeks or even months as I said before, it felt like to me they were just a team that was destined to fall apart and have, you know, be involved in the roster mania around uh, the major or in the aftermath of the major. So I don't believe that we're going to see Heroic really kick things up a notch. Additionally, this is in the playoffs. We have not seen Heroic in many playoffs as of late, especially not in this kind of a pressure cooker situation in front of tons and tons of very passionate Brazilian fans. I suppose for Heroic, they're lucky they're not going to be playing against Fury unless it's in the grand finals. But I, I'm looking at Na'Vi and I'm thinking like they have to make the grand finals, right? And and for my money, they probably win this tournament as well. Vitality Mouse feels like a bit of a coin flip, but I would certainly edge fa in favor of Vitality to win that because Mouse have had a few struggles, a, a few twists and turns. And up until the point where Vitality played against Heroic, they were they were absolutely in cruise control. Like Zaiwu was just smurfing against the Mongols, a 1.83 rating. They smashed 9Z 13-3. Like up until they ran into Heroic, they were super dominant. So I think in that regard, I'm probably looking at Vitality to face Fury and Na'Vi to face Heroic. I think Na'Vi will beat Heroic. Furia against Vitality is a tough one, but I would have to go with the overall standing of the fact that Vitality have been more consistent. They have heavier hitters. Yes, the crowd. Yes, all of those caveats put into place. It's going to be a very tough game, but I'd probably say Vitality and Na'Vi in the grand finals. So with that being said, this is going to be my team. Now, I'm quite top-heavy on this one, and I went back and forth a lot of times. I'm going to show you additionally on the lineup with the prices and whatnot, why I've gone for this team. First off, I think 184 and 182 for Alexi and Apex, respectively, is crazy good value for money, especially when you consider that I think Na'Vi beat VP, and you could argue Mouse beat uh, Vitality, and it's definitely possible they will. Don't get me wrong on this one. But I think, although Apex has had a couple of very bad performances in this tournament himself, 184k is very very low and he's always that kind of player that can deliver 
when it's in big, big positions. So this is a gamble, 100%. I'm banking on Vitality beating Mouse and then probably going the distance. But I have three very good players that should offset any stinkers that Alexi and Apex may have. So we've got Spinks again, who is Mr. Dependable. We've got Bit, who is fantastic for Na'Vi. And I've also put a little bit of a Hail Mary in here as well with Furia that couldn't afford Caserato, who was very expensive. I think he was 216. Let's go have a look. Yeah, he was 216, so I couldn't have, have like managed to get him involved. But I do have Yuri, who's their second kind of part of the fist that's going to smack through people. And he's going to get me some guaranteed points because he's already in the semi-finals and if furia do manage to beat vitality or mouse i've at least got one of the players on that side of the bracket that's going to make it through ultimately the way that i get completely wrecked here is if mouse go through to the grand finals right so then i would have zero players on that side of the bracket but i feel good about navi making the grand finals on their side bit is just super dependable and i think alexi's crazy good value for money for 182 like his own rating isn't that bad either a 0.95 compare that to carrigan or stacks for example and it's just so much better um, but additionally he's in a team that wins a lot of the time and he can even have performances where he gets some decent points i mean you see here he got me 28 points and he was dirt cheap i think he was 188 187 um in the, in the group stage so I feel pretty good about this overall. The only nightmare is that Mouse, like, come alive and we see some, like, you know, vintage Jimmy and vintage Exertion performances. But I, I've got this, I've just got this gut feeling that Vitality, for me personally, have looked like a better team. I think Vitality win that. Fear and Vitality, I think Vitality have the slight edge, the slight favor as far as I'm concerned, but I was very uh, much wanting to get at least one Furia player. I was thinking of going for Skulls. I'm not sure if the overall occasion will get to skulls he's not been in positions like this much before there's gonna be a lot of pressure on him he's still a very young guy i think that yuri is more capable of handling that pressure and channeling it and actually getting some big performances from this so i was happier to go with yuri and then dip down to my two igl so that's gonna be my team let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with this pick have you maybe gone all in for mouse Maybe you're one of the people that goes all in for like Heroic or VP. It's very possible as well. I think this is a very exciting playoffs, honestly. I think all of the games are going to be very fun to watch and interesting, if nothing else. So I see you in the next video. Hopefully, we've managed to land ourselves another top 20, 25%, and we can keep this consistency going forward. Catch you in the next one.